Today, let's talk about promises made and received. And I'm going to read to you from 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 5, where we read this. Then Razan, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to make war. And they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. Now, at the time of 2 Kings 16, the 12 tribes of Israel were divided into two kingdoms, and they had been that way for more than 200 years. They always seemed to compete with each other, and sometimes they made war against one another. Here, we see the 10 northern tribes led by Pekah, the king of Israel, attacking the two southern tribes of the kingdom of Judah led by Ahaz. The king of Israel was afraid of the rising Assyrian Empire, and he hoped that attacking Judah would make them stronger against the Assyrians. In Isaiah chapter 7, verse 6, we learn that the real goal of this attack was to remove Ahaz and to set up another king over Judah. We also know from 2 Chronicles chapter 28 that on the whole, Judah suffered terrible losses from this attack. King Ahaz lost 120,000 Judean soldiers and 200,000 civilian hostages in these battles with Israel and Syria. It was a dark time for the kingdom of Judah, and it looked as if the dynasty of David would soon be extinguished, as happened so many times with the ruling dynasties of Israel to the north. Yet, these combined forces of Israel and Syria did not defeat the kingdom of Judah. We read in our verse that they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. The armies of Syria and Israel were strong enough to capture many cities of Judah, but not strong enough to defeat Jerusalem and overthrow the government of Ahaz. Now, do you remember the remarkable messianic promise or prophecy of Isaiah chapter 7? There, God promised this. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The prophecy of Isaiah 7, including the announcement of the Emmanuel sign, came from Isaiah to King Ahaz during this invasion from Israel and Syria. And despite this promise, Ahaz refused to trust in the Lord, and instead he put his trust in the king of Assyria. Yet, for the sake of David, God did not allow this disastrous attack on Judah to prevail. He would not allow this satanic plot against the messianic dynasty of David to succeed. Now, these great promises didn't really bring Ahaz much peace because he didn't believe them. Friends, the promises of God do us little good if we don't believe them. Even when God is faithful to the promises and rescues us, just like he did King Ahaz and the kingdom of Judah, then we don't enjoy the peace and comfort we could if we had only believed. What promise of God do you need to believe today? For example, God promises peace to those who give their attention to him. That's in Isaiah chapter 26. God promises release from anxiety in prayer. That's in Philippians chapter 4. God promises abundant life in Jesus Christ. That's in John chapter 10. God promises forgiveness when we confess and repent of our sins. That's in 1 John chapter 1. You see, there are many, many more precious promises of God than even those ones I've listed. But they only do us real benefit as we believe them, and receive them. Friend, today you can believe and receive every promise that God has made to you. Do it by faith.